all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel chicago bears fans it is all about to change we are about a week away from the start of the nfl draft where the chicago bears are loaded up with the first overall selection the ninth pick in the first round and then you've got a third rounder and you do have a fourth rounder a number a multitude of different options ryan pulls the gm of the chicago bears finds himself in and uh folks i gotta say you know, I, actually, the rumor today and the last couple of days has been watch out for Chicago to trade up to potentially pick number four or five to select Marvin Harrison Jr. Really, Ryan Poles can't do anything wrong in the top 10. You are going to have your selection of Caleb Williams, obviously, at pick number one. And then at pick number nine, maybe you're going to get lucky with Malik Neighbors. Maybe you're going to get Joe Alt. A Dunze, maybe a trade back. Uh, it's just so many options. The Chicago Bears have so many options. And what's even better with the additions of guys like Keenan Allen, Ryan Bates, DeAndre Swift, Kevin Byard, Montez Sweat at the deadline last year, the re-signing of Jalen Johnson. The best part about the Chicago Bears is once they get their quarterback, Caleb Williams, at pick number one. In my opinion, there's not really many pressing needs. I don't think there's any pressing needs. Like, yes, maybe Braxton Jones could be upgraded. Maybe you could use another guard. Maybe you could use a wide receiver number three because Keenan Allen's last season and you've got a rookie QB coming in. Maybe you could use some safety help. You want an opposite edge rusher to Vontez Sweat. But, like, I know they only have four picks, but you're about to get two, hopefully, superstars, minimum stars, and then who knows what they're going to do in the third or fourth round. So that's what we're going to talk about in tonight's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button. Hit that sub button for daily Bears content. Bears fans, appreciate you guys as always. If you could try and get this video to 250 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So really quickly, one of the sneakiest moves, in my opinion, in the entire NFL offseason was DeAndre Swift. Uh to my surprise, I was reading an article and it was like 14 of the worst offseason signings thus far. And DeAndre Swift was on that list. And the, the logic on it, and of course, yes, it was a Bleacher Report article. Uh, DeAndre, three years, $24 million contract. He reached over 1,000 rushing yards for the first time in his career last season. He hasn't been in the league for all that long. But here's like this common misconception with both Rashawn Johnson, who was a rookie, can catch the ball, he can block, he can do a little bit of everything, but he was a rookie and he was playing behind Khalil Herbert and also Dante Foreman at various points in the season and then obviously Justin Fields. Like, I get it, Khalil only played 12 games, uh, but he's not this star running back, right? Not necessarily saying DeAndre Swift's about to mold himself into a star with Caleb Williams and the new Chicago Bears offense, but what I am saying is if you take out Justin Fields' rushing statistics, who once again led the Bears in rushing yards again, they were a bottom 10 rushing offense in the National Football League. DeAndre Swift, in my opinion, paired up with Khalil Herbert, who I think could be a trade candidate sooner rather than later. And last year's rookie, Rashawn Johnson, is I think he just gives you more flexibility. He gives you more versatility. And I do think he has a bigger playmaking potential. Uh, one thing that was severely underutilized last year was just you know, thrown it to the running back. You know, I know they did a lot of screens, but Philadelphia didn't really utilize DeAndre the same way that the Detroit Lions did in his first couple of years there. Like DeAndre Swift averaged less than 15 receiving yards per game last year, but he in his career is an over 25 receiving yards per game running back. So my point is I just like the versatility that DeAndre Swift brings into this offense because the Chicago Bears, and this is why Ryan Poles made the move, we didn't see enough from Rashawn Johnson and Khalil Herbert to feel confident and comfortable with the loss of Justin Fields that the Chicago Bears could remain the second best rushing offense in the NFL. So I just think the addition of DeAndre Swift is going to go a really long way to help out Caleb Williams. All right, now we're going to go through two quick segments that i was reading earlier today the first one was this if neither verse nor turner is available the bears should choose a top wide receiver with keenan allen set to be a free agent in 2025 or trade down and then take the best defensive tackle for eberflus's scheme 
Me personally, I'm very big on Trevon Dexter. I'm also very big on Zach Pickens. I know he didn't see the field too much last season, but paired up with Andrew Billings, who was very consistent, very reliable. The interior defensive line is not as big of a need for me as the other edge rusher is you know, for Montez Sweat. Um, I will say, I don't think neighbors will be available. I also don't think Joe Alt will be available. I really, I've seen so many mock drafts, man. I don't think Dallas Turner or Jared Verse in a draft class, I just think it's such a weak defensive end draft class that I think in any other draft from previous seasons that both of those two picks would not be consensus top tens. I don't think either of them are really consensus top tens. I think you only really see it with the Atlanta Falcons going with, you know, an edge rusher because they desperately need one in the top 10 just based off of need. Uh, but I really think the Chicago Bears are going to do two things. They're either going to take Roma Dunze at pick number nine to pair up with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and your rookie quarterback, Caleb Williams, or you're going to trade down and probably land, you know, around pick 15, around pick 13 to 18, somewhere around there. That's where I think they'll probably draft an offensive tackle. And then in the second round, you could take an edge rusher. You could take a center like Zach Frazier. You could still take a wide receiver. Uh, but I would say... I think you know the the trade up rumors are very recent. I, I think Chicago's got a much more likelihood of trading back and just gathering some type of mid first round draft pick and some type of day two draft pick in the second or third round to just bolster your depth. But I will just say, if Adunze is on the board, if Malik Neighbors is on the board, and even if Joe Alt's still on the board, which I think is very unlikely. Those are three just as they call them blue chip players that I don't think you can pass on in any way, shape or form. Uh, if you give your rookie QB, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Adunze or Neighbors or whoever, um, he has so much to work with. And obviously Cole Komet and Gerald Everett, the new addition at the tight end spot. I just think you're giving your rookie QB so many options uh, that it would just help take you to the next level. And that, that's just... DeAndre Swift, Keenan Allen, Cole Komet, you know, DJ Moore as it stands right now, I do think is a very good wide receiver room. I think it's a good receiving room in general, tight ends and running backs included. Uh, but I do say if a Dunze is available, pick number nine, I don't know how you can say no to that. So uh, that's just my opinion. Defensively, man, I, I really don't have many concerns, many flaws with it. Um, Demarcus Walker, you know, I know it's nothing crazy on the other edge, but at the same time, man, I don't think that the Chicago Bears will be drafting either Jared Verse or Dallas Turner at pick number nine. Like I said, I think he could take a guy like Verse later on or midway through the first round fairly easily. That secondary is looking really nice. I do just want to say before we get out of here, one thing I haven't seen too many people take note of is the safety room. I would like some type of extra safety depth. Uh, just considering right now it's Jaquan Brisker, Kevin Byard, and Jonathan Owens. Uh, but I don't feel all that great. No disrespect, obviously, to Elijah Hicks. But you know, if one of those or if two of the safeties end up getting banged up, I don't feel great long term uh, with having that shallow of a safety room. So let me know what your thoughts are specifically on pick number nine, but also let me know your thoughts on the Chicago Bears draft in general. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you soon.